Welcome to a beginner's guide to modelling a wooden ship. Part 2. This is the uh, Hel Helcon scale 1 to 100. This is a, a cheap kit which can be bought for about $15 US from Amazon or about uh, 250 baht from Thailand. I normally build larger ships. This is the uh, Sail Real. Uh, it's a, a big ship. The main reference I'll be using for this ship is the Baltimore Clipper, which is what this is, or a, a topsail schooner. We'll start off by uh, putting a new uh, number 11 blade in the uh, craft knife. Be very careful handling these, they're uh, very, very sharp. Cut yourself and you don't need to you know you've done it until the blood drips on the job. Get in the right position. This one's uh, a little bit more expensive than the others, but it's nice and comfortable in the hand and uh, it doesn't roll off the bench. So we identify here, we're going to start work on the uh, keel. There's a, a number of small tabs that have to be uh, separated from the uh, skeleton. This uh, mat is very good because it's self-healing, so it, uh, it's a large one, it's A3, you can get away with a smaller one or you can just get away with just being very careful. Work your way around, make sure you get each one of the tabs and just don't push it very hard at all because this is very flimsy, very thin ply. So just work your way slowly around, making sure you get each one. Just slowly work its way out. That's a very tight fit. The uh, laser cutting is very good. It's um, I've got to compliment on this. It's uh, I've done some very a lot of kits, and this is probably about the best one for um, laser cut. Look at the plans. They're not very right, widely recognised. Are good, but uh, they help. Now we're looking for the uh, the first bulkhead. Now I made a major, or nearly made a major error here. I'll explain that in a few seconds, but uh, I'm just identifying the numbers on the uh, bulkheads. These are not ribs, they're actually bulkheads. But on a ship there'd be a lot more ribs than what these bulkheads are available. You can build kits plank on rib. But this is plank on bulkhead. Make sure you read the instructions fully and understand which part you're actually working on. Identify the part in the middle here and cut this off. Making sure you very carefully cut these tabs. You'll hear them pop as you go through. And even then they don't uh, go through. So the best thing to do is just turn it over and you'll see where you haven't cut through. So just go over it again.
getting a uh, sanding stick. These are very good because they're a little bit flexible. They're not uh, hard. So they're ideal for a little radius curve like this. I can get into the radius and just smooth that off and you can uh, feel it with your finger to, or your fingernail to uh, see whether you've actually got rid of it. It doesn't take much because as I said, this is a very high quality laser cut. Not kit, just cut. <laughs> And this is where I start to make the error, or almost make the error. Every ship plan I've seen, every model I've built in the last 30 years, number one bulkhead, or number one frame, or number one rib, is at the bow. So that's where I'm working. I'm trying to work out, this is not going to fit properly, it's uh, the wrong shape. working away trying to get it in there and realizing something's not right here a bit thick these days just easing off with the uh, small flat file needle file it's uh... then I look at the numbers and realize I'm it starts at the stern <laughs> so the numberings on the this boat this kit start at the stern which is very unusual I've never seen it before but I hadn't glued it in, so I hadn't made a mistake. Aha. So just something to keep in mind when you make this kit. Check the numbers. Also, when putting this in, I have all the numbers on the uh, these bulkheads facing towards the bow. I don't know whether it'll make any difference if it's symmetrical, but it's just in case there's a slight error, it'll help eliminate any problems. I put a small pencil mark at the bottom of each slot so that when I put it together I can see that I've bottomed out on the slot. I don't, can't remember how long ago I saw this little trick but it uh, helps a lot because you can make sure you're right in the slot. Because I've had kits where the slots haven't been deep enough or they've been too deep. So this way you can uh, check to see whether you bottom out. bit out of frame here but uh, I will get there. I get my little um, square and check to see whether it's close to being square. On my left there where I reached across to get, to get the square I have a, uh, a magnetic knife rack and uh, I'll show a photo next video of uh, all my tools that are stuck on this rack. As you saw, they were in easy arms reach, all the metal tools. Now I uh, got my white glue on a, uh, a block. Using a toothpick, I just use a little bit. Don't use too much. I'm only going to glue the first two frames in to, to make sure everything's square before I fit the deck. And just put it, push it in until the uh, pencil lines line up, and the top of the frame is in line, in line with the top of the deck. Using a uh, swab to get rid of any excess glue. It's a not a wet swab, but just a, a damp one. It'll soak up the glue, extra glue. Now I use my uh, Lego blocks, the magic squares to uh, clamp it in to make sure everything's square. Just using one of my clamps to hold it. And put one again on, another one on the other side. Checking the square again, that little square I got when I did my apprenticeship back in 1964 so uh, she's seen a fair few jobs 
It's a problem here in Thailand. The um, humidity in the air and my tools rust up very quickly. So I'm forever uh, spraying them with WD-40, the magic WD-40. Here it is after it's dried and I start work on the, uh, the next frame. which is number two I'm working on there now. Again, make the pencil mark. Notice I'm only using mineral glue. You don't want to use too much. And white glue in this sort of situation is better than the uh, super glue because super glue can be brittle. So uh, this PVA white glue is excellent for this part of the work. Just using my small hammer to uh, tap it down to make sure it's flush with the deck. You hear a sound when they uh, they bottom out. It sounds different to when you're tapping it down. The moment it hits the bottom, you hear a slightly different sound. Again, I use the Lego blocks. These are fantastic. It's um, the glue just doesn't stick to them. My grandson lost a few Lego blocks. He didn't know. And you can never have too many clamps. And I'll allow that to dry. Now I've got all the rest of the frames fitted. Not glued, just fitted. And this getting ready to, uh, my next process was to uh, prime some of the bulkheads and the ends for uh, painting. So thanks for watching, please subscribe and hit that bell. So cheerio till next time, thank you.